It's December and we've been getting one big storm after another. It's not usual for Southern California, but it happens. Camarillo Airport gets very quiet in the rain. When it goes IFR, almost nobody's flying except for the pros. This winter, something happened far away that changed our weather here. An El Nino way down in the South Pacific subsided, which somehow set up atmospheric rivers that send waves of heavy rain to California. The rivers are also called the Pineapple Express because of the long trains of moisture blowing here direct from Hawaii. Winter storms often leave us with our most spectacular weather of the year. If the clouds clear late in the day, it may give us this wonderful golden light, dramatic skies, and shiny pavement, absolutely perfect for photography at the airport. The nearby Topa Topa Mountains form Camarillo's northern background. Though prominent on the horizon, their dark and dusky green colors often let them fade in the distance. But a winter storm can change all that. Now a Pineapple Express is relatively warm and may give us no snow, even at the highest elevations. But oh when there's snow, what a magical transformation. If you grew up in snow country, you might hardly notice. But snow in Southern California is rare, and when we get it, it's exciting enough to make you want to see it up close. So let's go. Runway 26, clear to land. Three, traffic and flag, clear to land, four to go. Camarillo Tower is on the 252 Sierra Papa on the VOR practice approach for runway 28. Cessna 252 Sierra Papa, Camry Tower, continue inbound, report a four-mile final. Continue inbound, this is a four-mile final. So, where are we going exactly? I mean, exactly, exactly. Now that we've got four flight and sensory in the cockpit, we get precise flight records that we can import into Google Earth to make track renderings like this. The blue roller coaster track shows both our path and altitude. As you can see, our path to the mountains was almost due north from Camarillo for 15 miles, in a gradual climb that met the mountains at Chief Peak. From Chief Peak, we turned east and gained altitude with the ridges until we reached 7,000 feet. You can see the twists and loops of our maneuvers as we turned and soared along the line of mountains. Honestly, there was snow down to the 4,000 foot level the morning before. Now there's barely any left at 6,000. It just disappears in a wink from the south facing slopes. We're coming up on Nordoff Ridge. Chief Peak is straight in front of us. We're about to enter the back country. Nowhere near as much snow as I thought there'd be. Uh, I figure there'd be a lot on the uh, north facing slopes. That may yet be the case as I round Chief Peak. And yes indeed, plenty of snow on the north side. You'd hardly know there's roads up here, but the snow makes roads and trails pop right out, and now they seem all over the place. They'd make an amazing Sunday drive, but unfortunately, they're closed except by permit. Watching the engine temperature, trying to keep uh, the number three cylinder below 400 degrees. We made a fairly quick climb to 5,700 feet, which can make the engine run hotter than I like if I don't watch it carefully, especially that number three cylinder. All right, here we are. Oh, high bluffs. These are the Topa Topa Mountains, part of the Los Padres. The northern side of it is the Sespe Wilderness. The sea level. 6,500 feet, just a few miles. And oh, it's pretty back here. All right, next big peak coming up in front of us, Heinz Peak, 6,700 feet. Not the highest. Once further to the north, go up to 7,500 or so, even further north. And that's coming into view now. Pinos, 9,500 feet. They've got big mountains in Ventura County, that's for sure. We were over, or very
very close to where the general's plane and the aircraft wreck been there for 50 years or something like that. In May of 1971, retired General Richard Hunziger and his wife Margaret were flying from Calexico to Santa Barbara. Sadly, they crashed their Cessna 182 here and did not survive. General Hunziker was best known for directing the recovery of four nuclear weapons lost in the 1968 B-52 crash in Greenland. The presence of the General's plane is a sober reminder of the risk inherent in flying. Hunziker had 6,800 flight hours and was a far better pilot than I'll ever be. But there was still an accident, and to this day no one knows why. Flying carefully is on my mind, but I weigh that against the need to enjoy the moment with our view of the mountains and their fleeting snow. Circle around that. Head back into Camarillo. It's not my first flight up here for the snow by any means. What can I say? I can't resist the sight of this familiar landscape transformed by a rare snowfall. Here's footage from 2008 from a much bigger, colder storm that came down from Alaska. As you might expect, the storm from Alaska is going to be much colder than one from Hawaii. In this case, snow level came down to 3,000 feet or so. That's low enough to cause problems like shutting down the passes over the mountains. That's Interstate 5 down there. Note the lack of traffic. It closed due to heavy snow. That doesn't happen very often. It's much more likely to get closed from fires or floods. Tower 220 is back in the 45 for right traffic 26. Tunnel 220, roger. We're back to 2022 and we're returning to Camarillo. Downhill from the Topa Topas to Camarillo is short and steep, and headed down like that, the Cardinal gains a great deal of speed. The mix of high airspeed, mind-blowing sunset, and preparation for landing is quite a heady rush. It's a great feeling, and you know we'll be going back for more, whether there's snow or not, and I hope you'll be joining me then too.